So then they come up with this plan to deceive their father. And Reuben goes along with the plan because otherwise he's in trouble. So now they're going to deceive their father, Jacob. Does that kind of ring a bell a little bit? Remember, Jacob deceived his father, Isaac. And now all of his sons together conspire to deceive Jacob, their dad. Jacob's sons commit the very same sin that he committed against his father. Now, you know, as, as, a, as a parent, it's hard to see your children commit the same sins that you commit. It's, it's, it's hard for you to feel like uh, you have any authority, really. You know, who are you? And it, and it grieves you to see your children behaving the same way that you behave. So here's what they do. They're going to they take Jake, Joseph's tunic, verse 31. They killed a kid of the goats and dipped the tunic in the blood. So they kill one of Jacob's goats and use the blood from one of Jacob's goats to deceive Jacob, just as Jacob used one of Isaac's goats to deceive Isaac. Then they sent the tunic of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, Hey, we have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? They presented to, to their father and the dad. Do you know whether this is Joseph's tunic or not? Does this look familiar to you? And, and he recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. And then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And it's hard to imagine the regret that Jacob felt because Jacob is the one who sent his son Joseph on this journey that got him killed in his, you know, in his, in his mind. And I'm sure for Jacob, he had many you know, questions and what ifs going on in his mind. What, what if I would have gone with him? What if I would have sent a servant with him? What if I would have waited a day to send him? Would he still be alive? And, and so on and so on. Verse 35 says, and all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I shall go down into the grave to my son and mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Now, dealing with the death of a loved one is the most difficult part of life. And that is especially true when it is the death of a child. When a child dies before the parent, there's just, there's just something out of order there. A parent should never have to bury their child. And the reason dealing with death is so difficult for us is because God created us for life, not death. We weren't created for death. We were created to live. We were created for life. When Adam sinned, the Bible tells us, when Adam sinned, death entered the world. And so, so death ultimately is the result of, of sin, of the fall of, of mankind. But death wasn't part of God's original design for mankind. Death wasn't part of the original plan. Mankind was designed for life. We weren't really made to handle death and the deep emotions that arise from death. We, we simply weren't designed for it. We, we don't have a file for that that we can open up and access. There's no file there. It's, it's not in the software. We, we don't have it. We don't have the capacity for death. And that's why it's so difficult. So there's, a, there's, there's the process of grieving. And there's the process of mourning that we go through after a loved one dies. And, and, and of course, we, we never get over it. We never completely heal from it. Those, those raw emotions are always right under the surface. 
even decades and decades and decades later, those emotions are always right below the surface. But there is this process of grieving that we go through and this process and, and this progression that, that we go through. And grieving is important and the process is, is important. But we're told, look, 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 we're told Jacob refused to be comforted after Joseph's death. There are some people who refuse to be comforted. This word can also be translated unwilling. There are some people who are unwilling to be comforted. They, they will not allow anyone or anything to comfort them in their grief over their loss. They, they, they are unwilling to even enter into the process. To even begin. And that's very unhealthy. There's a process to it. And it's unhealthy to, to be unwilling to engage in the process and enter into the process. Jacob refuses to enter into the process of grieving for his son. He refuses to be comforted. Now for us as believers in Jesus Christ, how are, how are we comforted when someone dies? Well, we're comforted by the gospel, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, because the resurrection tells us that death is not the final word, that death is not the end. We just celebrated Easter a couple weeks ago, the empty tomb, the resurrection, the hope beyond the grave, the grave was conquered, death was defeated by Jesus Christ. And the, the Apostle Paul says, we do not sorrow as those who have no hope, you know, we we do sorrow as believers. It's normal to sorrow and to grieve when someone dies. But as believers in Jesus Christ, we sorrow with hope. We sorrow with the hope of the resurrection. We sorrow, yes, but we have the hope of, of eternal life. We take comfort in knowing that that loved one who has died, if they knew Christ, that we will one day see them again in heaven and that we will be reunited with them. So there's a comfort in that. Doesn't heal it completely, but there's a comfort there. There's a comfort available to us. We also find comfort in God. God is, is our comforter. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, God is described as the God of all comfort. And it says that He comforts us in all of our troubles. He's the God of all comfort. Jesus describes the Holy Spirit as the comforter in John's Gospel. That's a title for the Holy Spirit, a name for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. The Holy Spirit's ministry and role in our lives is to, to comfort us in our time of, of grieving. And so instead of refusing to be comforted for us, we should press into the Lord so that He can minister to us and so that He can comfort us because he's the source of our comfort. And that, that should be the way that we as Christians respond to death. Press into the Lord. And allow the Lord to comfort us. Allow the Lord to minister to us. Allow his word to comfort us.